Okay, so I chose two images, uh, two out of the three. Um, this is one. I can show you now what I mean by when you have your tabs here, you can lift up the tracing paper and see whether you feel as though there's too much detail or not enough. And I think, I think I'm going to go with that. One thing I did notice when I was doing this or think about when I was doing this is that if we go back to Sunga Park's work she doesn't really show the floor she doesn't really show any ground um, it's just the tops well on these images anyway it's just the tops of the buildings so I don't know whether I'll add that in or maybe sort of stop it there and have it more washy down here or maybe just try some sort of wash with showing sort of grass and a path or something like that but I'm going to stick with that one I feel this one is a little bit like this one in a way where this bit looks disjointed and I thought I'd try that with that bit there so I did this with the tracing paper as you can see I'll just take the tabs off there so I can move them about so that's the image I use. Um, I also went with this one and I used the greaseproof paper for this one and that's how it's turned out and I quite like the way it's turned out. I think I like it better than the other one actually because I kind of feel that I can, I can do something down there so it make it look a bit more dramatic with sort of washes down here and I quite like the detail here. What I did find with both of them is that when you are selecting your details to add, make sure that you give an indication of sort of the shape of the building, how it's how it looks, how it's formed. It's okay taking away a lot of detail but there's certain things that you need to add in. So for instance, I felt that I needed to add these columns in because you kind of understand by the shape of the outline that it's symmetrical and the columns will come over here as well but we just can't see them but we know that they're there also with these bits here we sort of describing form and detail and we kind of as the viewer we have to sort of assume that that detail is sort of uh, symmetrical or follows on on this side as well um, so yeah I, I kind of like this one the best so I'm gonna carry on with this picture um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the image over usually I'd use carbon paper but I'm gonna turn the image over I don't want it too strong carbon paper sometimes leaves quite a heavy mark on watercolor paper and I don't want a heavy mark that I can't remove easily because on Sunga Parks you can't see any sort of outline or in fact I'm not sure whether she does do an underlying drawing but we're going to because we want to try and make it uh, look successful <laughs> um, and sometimes techniques like this take years to perfect and we haven't got years have we we've got a few weeks maybe to try and develop something so we're gonna use what's at hand and we're gonna use tracing paper and we're gonna have a draw and we're gonna put draw in and so so if I am going to transfer this image onto my watercolor paper I need to use I've used an F pencil for the tracing I'm going to use a softer pencil I'm going to use a 2B and I'm going to turn it over and I'm sure you've all done this or seen this before uh, I'm going to do this all the way around you don't want to press too hard and you don't want to put um, you don't want to add graphite all over the paper you just want to sort of concentrate it in the areas 
where you're going to uh, do a trace in, where those pencil lines are. I have in the past, oh, it's a bumpy thing, isn't it? There. In the past, I've used um, something like you can use chalk if you've got chalk pastel. Uh, you can use that. A red, a, a red seems to leave less of a mark actually. I suppose it depends what you're doing. If you're doing buildings, red is quite a nice colour to use. Just so you can get that line on the watercolour paper, you can get that traced line. If you use pastels instead of pencil, as I'm doing here, you can. it'll just sort of dissolve into the paint and it might add, <laughs> it might add to some of the colour. That you're going to use so make sure you cover all those pencil lines don't go too hard with this part of the process because if you go too hard you won't see the pencil lines on the other side and that's going to be important sometimes people um, just go over the same line again but I kind of I don't know I find it a little bit tedious I find this is this is adequate for what I'm gonna do so for that reason this is what I'm doing okay. So you can still see your pencil line over the top and if you use a harder pencil, so I'm using a HB because I want it to stay quite fine. Always use a pencil sharpener, always sharpen your pencil. Don't work with a blunt pencil. You won't get very good results usually. You won't get very accurate results if you're using a blunt pencil. So I'm just gonna demonstrate and also just check, it's worth checking that your pencil lines will come through. On the other side. Yep, that's fine, that'll do. So I'm gonna get my watercolor paper and um, I'll be back in a minute with the traced image on my watercolor paper and we'll have a go with the colors. Okay. 